lesson is to compare linear, quadratic, and exponential models, and given a set of data, decide which type of function models the data, and then write an equation to describe the function. Look at the tables and graphs below. The data show three ways you've learned that variable quantities can be related. The relationship shown is linear. So there's a set of data, and then you see that when you plot the points, it forms a line. This one is quadratic. You see the um, information in the table, and then when you start to plot the points, you see that it is in the shape of a parabola. And this one is exponential. When you, you have the data, and then when you plot the points, you can see that it is at a smooth curve. In the real world, people often gather, gather data and then must decide what kind of relationship, if any, they think best describes their data. Graph each set of data, what kind of model best describes the data. So they give you um, time and bacteria. The bacteria is increasing over the amount of time. You plot the data and look and view the graph. The data appears to be exponential. Graph the data, what kind of model best describes the data. Again, they give you um, a set of ordered pairs to graph. And when you graph them, the data appears to be linear. Graph each set of data, what kind of model best describes the data. Here's one for you to try on your own, and then you can check back for your answer. So you plot these points, and the data appears to be exponential. Graph each set of data, what kind of model best describes the data. This one's for you to try, and then you can check back for your answer. So when you plot the points, the data appears to be quadratic. Another way to decide which kind of relationship, if any, best describes the data set is to use patterns. Look for a pattern in each set of data to determine which kind of model best describes the data. For every constant change in time of plus one second, there's a constant second difference of negative 32. So you can see they've checked for x that it changes every time plus one, and then they checked for y, we have plus 64, plus 32, 0, and negative 32. We checked for second differences, and those are the same of negative 32. The data appears to be quadratic. Look for a pattern in each set of data set to determine which kind of model best describes the data. So you check for um, x, make sure it's changing, it's plus 1 every time, and then you can see that it is times 1.17. You would find that by dividing the number by its previous term. For every constant change in time of plus one year, there's an approximate constant ratio of 1.17. So the data appears to be exponential. Look for a pattern in the set of data, negative 2, 10, negative 1, 1, 0, negative 2, 1, 1, 2, 10, to determine which kind of model best describes the data. This one's for you to try on your own, and then you can check back for your answer. So you check for a constant change in the x values, and there's plus 1, plus 1, plus 1 every time. And then you check in the y values, and it's not the same for the first differences, but it is the same for the second differences. It's plus 6 every time. For every constant change of plus 1, there's a constant ratio of 6. So the data appears to be quadratic. The second differences are the same. After deciding which model best fits the data, you can write a function. Recall the general forms of linear, quadratic, and exponential functions. Linear is in the form of y equals mx plus b. Quadratic is in the form of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And exponential is in the form of y equals a b to the x power. Use the data in the table to describe how the number of people changes. Then write a function that models the data. Use your function to predict the number of people who receive the email after one week. The answer will have three parts, a description, a function, and a prediction. The plan is to determine whether the data is linear, quadratic, or exponential. Use the general form to write the function. Use the function to find the number of people after one week. Step one, we're going to describe the situation in words. So here's the um, set of information. 0 days, 8 emails, 1 day, 56, 2 days, 392, and 3 days, 2,744. There's a constant change in x, plus 1 every time, and the pattern is times 7 each time for the email. 
each day the number of emails is multiplied by 7. So we're going to write the function. There's a constant ratio of 7, so the data appears to be exponential. Write the general rule, the general form of an exponential function, which is y equals a times b to the x power. 7 is the constant ratio, so that's the b value. The other value we need is the a value. So we're going to choose an ordered pair from the table because we already know that that's true for x and y, and we're going to substitute it in for x and y. So we have 0 for x and 8 for y. We're going to simplify 7 to the 0 power is 1. So we get 8 equals a times 1, and then we're going to divide and solve for a. So the value of a is 8. So we're going to substitute 8 in for a, and we already know that b was equal to 7. So the equation is y equals 8 times 7 raised to the x power. Now we're going to predict the emails after one week. So we're going to write out the function that we wrote down, y equals 8 times 7 raised to the x power. And we need to substitute in um, one week for x, and one week is 7 days. So we get 8 times 7 raised to the 7th power. We're going to use a calculator to figure that out, and it's 6,588,344. So there will be 6,588,344 emails after one week. Look back, you can always choose the ordered pair that you wrote the function with, and if you want to check, you can check every other ordered pair in the table to make sure that it satisfies the function. So you would plug in the x and y values and make sure that it is true, and it comes out true. Remember, when the independent variable changes by a constant amount, the linear functions have constant first differences, the quadratic functions have constant second differences, and the exponential functions have a constant ratio. Use the data in the table to describe how the oven temperature is changing. Then write a function that models the data. Use the function to predict the temperature after one hour. This one's for you to try on your own, and then you can check back for your answer. The answer will have three parts, a description, a function, and a prediction. The plan is to determine whether the data is linear, quadratic, or exponential, and then use the general form to write the function. Use the function to find the temperature after one hour. Step one, we're going to describe the situation in words. We have the time in minutes, 0, 10, 20, 30, and the temperature, 375, 325, 275, 225. We see that there is, for every 10 minutes, the temperature is reduced by 50 degrees. That's the change, minus 50. So we're going to write out the function. There's a constant reduction of 50 degrees every 10 minutes, so the data appears to be linear. That was the first differences. So we're going to write the general form of a linear function, which is y equals mx plus b. So the slope, which is m, is negative 50. It's going down 50 every time, divided by 10. So that would be negative 5. So remember, we're looking for the slope. Negative 50 over 10, that's the change. So that's negative 5. We're going to plug that in for m. And then we're going to choose an x value from the table, such as 0, to find the y-intercept. Because whenever x is 0, the other number we get is the y-intercept, which is b. So we plug in 0 and the starting point, b, which is 375. And so y equals 375. Predict the temperature after 1 hour. So we're going to write out the function. We have y equals negative 5x plus 375. We're going to substitute 60 for x because that's 60 minutes for the hour. And then we're going to simplify, and we get 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So the temperature will be 75 degrees after one hour. You can always, you chose 0, 375 to write the function, but you can always check back and see that all of the other ordered pairs satisfy your function. So you would just plug them into your equation and make sure that they come out to be true. And they do.